So last time I opened up my Amiga A500, um, just expecting it to be hopefully not too much damage with the battery. And when I opened it up initially, I was very happy to see there wasn't too much damage. Unfortunately, the uh, Agnes chip holder is completely ruined. Um, all the chips have fallen out of it. It was pretty bad state and looks like it has sustained some kind of water damage. Um, the packaging it came in, it did come in the, what was it? Um, the Cartoon Classic uh, box. And I had to throw that away because it was just so damp. Again, I just assumed being at one car boot fair too many, but now I'm looking at internally, maybe it was a bit more than that. Um, I do have a bit of the packaging, the part where the games came in. So as you can see, it doesn't look too bad until you get around to this side. And you can see that is kind of, that's pretty much what the whole box was like. So weirdly, some of it looked fine, some of it looked completely ruined. So I don't know, again, don't know whether it has been in a, a small flood or something. If that was the case, it it's very odd. The box itself, as I say, was completely soaked. This only seemed to be soaked one side. But um, but yeah, as I say, as it stands at the moment, still having fun and games trying to get this uh, Agnes working. So let's get into it. First thing was to try and remove the old Agnes chip holder. It's completely ruined, nothing I can really do with it. Pins are dropping out. So I was using my desoldering tool here, but as you can see, doesn't look like really it's removing much solder. So it looks like I've got another block nozzle on that. So just need to give that a clean out. So I had to go for the old school solder sucker. Then just using a little heat gun just to heat up all the pads to try and pull this thing out. Trouble with it is, because it's been in there for so long and because there's a little bit of uh, damage to it, didn't want to come out easily at all. So just cleaning the holes up, just making sure that's ready for the new socket to go in. You can see there's a little bit of damage to the ball there, some broken tracks. And if I go up, you can see there is corrosion around the bottom of them resistors there as well. Definitely some sort of water damage has gone on. So the uh, board as well got a little bit burnt when I was trying to take it off. Just the heat gun, the trouble is one minute it's okay and the, the solder's bubbling nicely. The next minute, you can see it's starting to burn it. Just a couple more holes I need to clean out a little bit better. On my comments, uh, Kevin H mentioned about, he said the serial port looks like the pins were slightly bent and they definitely were. And I believe that is what has caused the problem that Blue Winds 10 and Mike R also pointed out about the resistor being blown there. So that resistor is actually for one of the serial pins. So uh, T squared riffraff on the comments also mentioned about this stuff rather than it being uh, corrosion is actually a contact protector. So I thought I'd put it under the microscope and just get a bit of a closer look. And looking at it, I think he might be right because you can see the fact that it's on the actual plastic itself as well as the pins. To me, suggests that it is some kind of uh, yeah contact protector that they've, they've put on it, which is odd because I've never seen that before on Amiga. So I don't know whether someone else has done that at some point, but then it has all been sealed up again. So I'm assuming, unless someone's put new stickers on it, this has happened from Commodore. Commodore's done this. But yeah, you can see the state of the pins on there. They're just 
So many missing pins. And also, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of kind of, there is a corrosion or again, water damage, it looks like. You can see the way the pins aren't a, a silvery color. They're kind of I've got a white powder sort of substance on them. There's a split pin there. Just checking the continuity, and as you can see, definitely a broken track. Again, I started putting these links on the top and then realized it, it probably makes more sense to do it underneath, put the chip, the chip in first. So even though they're here, these are these get removed and I put it on the bottom side of the uh, board. So again, another completely dead track there. I mean, these two were fairly easy to spot, so. I'm not getting any uh, shorting out between that pin. It's all looking good. So again, when you're inserting this socket, you see there's an arrow there pointing to number one. On here, you see there's an arrow pointing, so the arrow should be pointing on the socket to number one, because you can easily put it round the wrong way. You could solder it like that and be none the wiser. So yeah, just make sure that little arrow there points to that number one. Because again, the uh, Agnes chip itself has a little, one of the corners is beveled off slightly, so it will only fit in that one position. So just re-soldering -sold in the, uh, the new socket now. link wires that are up the top took them off and now put them on the bottom just so it makes its connection removing that um, resistor as well I don't have this as a half watt resistor that should be in there a 47 ohm resistor um, not that you could tell from the look of it you see it's pretty badly burnt and again that's where them pins have shorted out so for now, I've just put in a quarter watt one, but again, it doesn't really do anything unless you're plugging something into the uh, into the serial port itself. I'm assuming that's where you would get trouble with it. Uh, just using a quarter watt, just using some nice profile alcohol just to clean it up a little bit. Just looking at the uh, pins on the Agnes chip as well, just seeing the state of them, as you can see they've got like a little bit of a white powdery substance on them as well. So I'm just putting the quarter watt one in there for now. Agnes goes back in. straighten up that pin not that it's touching anything right now but just to stop it from doing so in the future just plugging everything in just to give it a test see what we got still nothing so it's here I decided to take apart my Amiga 500 just try swapping some chips over just to see 
if any the other chips look okay but again it's hard to tell and looking at other videos just see like sometimes people think it's the Agnes and it's a completely different chip for example we've got the two CIA chips at the top here now these are interchangeable anyway so this is my 500 so everything that's coming out of 500 I'm marking it up with a little dot as well so I'm just putting two on that because they are the same chip I could put either left or right so these are the ones from the 500 plus as you can see it's all booting up now just trying the other chips as well the reason that was coming up black and white there I just gone into the mono I found out the uh, modulator wasn't working properly even when I tried it in here so now I'm just using my um, scart lead in the back Oh, oh, that's bad. The only trouble with using a PLCC chip puller is it's got metal on the inside. I've managed to get my finger in the middle and when it slipped, I managed to cut the end of my finger slightly. So I made sure my finger wasn't in there again. Because again, just going through all the chips from the other board, anything I could test on here. tried the uh, ROM in this one come up with a red so what I decided to do was try it in the in my 600 which uses a similar kickstart ROM so I think this had 2.04 and this originally the 600 had 2.05 but now this has got the 500 plus ROM in it so as you can see, that seems to be fine. I thought I'd just try this just to make sure. So that's all working fine. So I thought I'd remove this. Uh, use this kind of... Uh, glass fibre pen to try and clean the pins up a little bit better just to make sure it is making a good contact So if you notice there's Christmas tape on uh, the chips, These, this is just so I know what chips I'd actually tested. So I know anything with Christmas tape on it has been tested in another computer and is working properly. I can't check my Agnes chip on this old 500 because that uses a 7372A I believe Agnes chip which isn't quite compatible that the Amiga 500 Plus uses which is a 8375 Agnes, but also it's a different chip to the one that's say in the 600, the 600 is a surface mount one. The one for a 500 plus is an 830544-01. That's for a UK PAL one, I believe. I don't know, it might be slightly different for an American one, but you need to get that particular chip to, to put in there. I'm getting something slightly different in that little blip. Went around every single chip pin, testing it all out, just to see if I've got, again, some broken connections somewhere. And also if I wasn't getting a good reading just going over it again, re-soldering it, make sure I haven't got a dry joint. As you can see, I've added a couple of wires in here and there where I wasn't quite sure where I was getting a good connection or not. So, try it again. I'm getting this green flashing screen where it's flashing green and then flashing blank, flashing green, flashing blank. 
and looking this problem up, it's saying it's either a problem with the DRAM, Agnes, or possibly Gary. We know Gary's good because I've had him out, put him in the other computer. So I removed the uh, RAM chip. I've got a tester that can go up to 256K, but unfortunately the socket's too small to take these chips. However, I should be able to test these on my Amiga 500. I'm just gonna take one of the chips out there, put in a, a socket and socket this board as well, just so it's easier to swap them across. Failing that, I've ordered a new Agnes chip. Try that one out. And failing that, because I don't know what damage has happened to this board, I've actually bought a, a new motherboard as well. And I think this is what I'm going to use anyway, but it'd be nice to get everything working on this old board first before I transfer everything over. Next video, hopefully, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully we get a working computer.